dribbling cereal down your chin or something. You know, to me, and I had an opportunity at 32 financially to retire. But I was just getting started. I want to see people's lives change. You know, I'm six, I just turned 61, like January 24th, and I, I'm, I'm gulping life, man. I'm gulping life. I'm the best shape I've ever been in. I've never been more excited about life. I'm not sipping it, baby. I'm gulping. I'm gulping it down until they put the nails in that coffin, they stick me down, and I'm done. Because that's how I want to live my life. And that's how you guys should want to live it. I don't care how old you are. That's what it's about. So if I can organize my life and buy myself some more hours to do what I really want to do and to live the way I really want to live life again, it's going to give you hours you never thought you'd have. It's going to give your relationships a boost. <laughs> It's going to insert into your relationship with your kids, with your spouse, unbelievable things. But you got to do it, you guys. You can't keep going day after day and just wish something would change. It's not changing. you got to change it. So when it comes to your life daily, your management of time, your organization of your life, how you doing? You have to answer that. Listening. L. Vital part of our business, you guys. What people are telling you they want in this business. What are people looking for? What's their real why in their lives? You know, what are the things that they really want? I sit down with someone and say, I really want a big car. I want a new car. Okay, that's good. But that's not your why. It's, it's one of the things that's going to get you there. But really, when it boils right down to it, why we're all so similar, because every, in God, deep inside of every single one of us is a desire to make a difference in your life. To make a difference in your life, somebody else's life. To go back and do for your, like I was able to do for my mom, to give her a life. Because she would have never had a life financially if I hadn't built my business and succeeded. And I knew, and maybe some of you whose parents are still alive, whose dads have been working their whole lives, and you see your mama or your dad or whatever, and you see them still toiling, and they're going to toil, and they're going to toil until something changes for them. Well, let me tell you what's going to change when you can give them something, the provisional years. I knew there would come a call one day from my mom saying, what, son, I can't make it anymore. And you know what I thought about that in 1979? I've been working for, for like... Nine years in my construction company, seven and a half years as a cop, busting my butt, never sleeping, working seven days a week, seven days a week, seven days a week, never had a vacation in five years. And I thought, if my mom called me today, I'd have to say I came home. I had nothing. I didn't want that call. I never wanted it. I knew it would come, but I wanted to be prepared for it. If your parents are getting older, you're going to get that call. Or the day your kids sit out in your lap and say, Daddy, I've been working hard. i got a high GPA. I really want to go to school at Texas Christian University, or I really want to go to this private university. And you have to look at your kids. If you want to say, I'm really sorry, you guys. We can't afford it. We have to look elsewhere. No. No. My two kids were at TCU. They spent 80000 a year for the two of them going to school there. 80000 a year. My daughter was a freshman, bought her a beautiful new car. She lived in a cool dorm and lived in a really awesome house. And I wanted to do that for her. She worked hard to deserve it. <coughs> So in my productive years, I knew they were going to come provisional years. So I put the time and effort in. That's the why of us. The mom, the kids, you know, ourselves. Just to win at something maybe in our life. We need to just go at to a different level in our lives. Instead of always just getting by. Just hoping tomorrow gets better. You have a vehicle in your hand, all of you, that can change your life. I'm telling you. And there are people out there waiting to hear from you. Because they want what we're talking about. They want to feel significant. They want to win at life. They want to put the past behind them and move forward. They want a mentor that will speak truth into their life. We all desire that. Care what color we are, what our background is, what nation we're from. I don't care any of that. We all are created I believe personally by a God that puts that in our that seed in our soul and it's never going to be happy until we do it. And guess what? It ain't ever changing. Because you know, I've said, you've all heard on my tapes, heard me speak, struggles less painful than regret. And we so fear struggle, but let me tell you something, when you're 80 years old looking back at what you could have done and you didn't, that's worse. That hurts more. So if the things in this business scare you, so what? If things are a struggle for you, if you don't seem like you're the, quite the type to school, learn to talk to people so you can succeed in this business, then change. 
And is that going to be a struggle? Yes, it is. Is that going to hurt to do it? Yes. But what's the dip? What do you? What's the? What's the alternative? Because right right now, all of you can look back five years that pretty, that fast. Five years ago, if you can just go back, say, okay, where was that five years ago? You probably said to yourself, five years from now, it's going to be different. And my question is, for most of you, is it? So the question is, if I don't change something about my life five years from today, what's going to be different in my life? You have to be in charge of that. We're a business that's economic. It's economic proof. My business grew the most at the worst economic times because people finally get an open mind. People are closed-minded about network marketing. They're closed-minded right away. Oh, it's, is it that? Is it that? Right? But when they are broke, right, and they don't know if they're going to lose their house in 90 days, they get open-minded. Right? It's like I said, the mind's like a parachute. It doesn't work unless you open it. Right? And these people start opening their minds. So my business flourished during economic times that were tough. Because I put people in that would have never gotten in before. And they finally got it. It's like I said when I started today, once you know what I know you're in, because I know you, every one of you, I know deep down inside what you want. And I'm a believer with all of my heart that this business will give it to you if you want it. But don't give it lip service. Don't say, I really want this. Oh, this is on my dream board. Is it really? Okay, then go get it. Or tear it off. Because that's only your only choice you have. So you gotta be, you gotta you gotta listen to what people are saying. A lot of times they're not saying what you think they're saying. It's like I think about the four social styles. How many of you have read Personality Plus? Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot. If you haven't, please write it down. Personality Plus by Florence Littell. L-I-T-T-A-U-E-R. You need to read this book. So there's four, it talks about four different types of people. Okay, and I'll just give you a quick overview of each one. The sanguine type personality is the one who loves to be in front, is always smiling, excited about life, really disorganized for the most part. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a weak part of it. Disorganized, they can talk for hours, never encumbered by facts on anything, okay? But they're the life of the party. You, they, ever, they always get invited to the party because everybody wants to be around them. And they love shoes. You can always tell. When you, you just look at a woman's shoes, you say, it's sanguine. Okay? okay, so if I know, if I'm listening, what does the sanguine want? The sanguines are talkers. They want to know who's involved. So if I, if I show the business of Meredith, who's a sanguine, by the way, and I'm going to say, you wouldn't believe the people that work in this business. Jelaine Johnson. I start naming, oh. Because you know why? Because here's what. They want to be a part of something cool. They want to be part of something really cool. So if I'm talking to a sanguine, I want to make sure that they know, hey, geez, this is really cool. You can't believe the people you're going to meet, the people you're going to get a chance to be around. And, and you know, you're going to get a chance to go to these events. There's going to be people on stage. There's going to be people involved in your life. So I'm going to talk to them, and I'm going to listen to what they want. And it's totally different than what somebody else might want. But I have to customize it. When I'm working with a coach, if I'm working with a coach in the business, i got to know their social style. Okay? If they're a choleric personality, you know, cholerics are type A driver personalities. Like they want to be in charge all the time. They, they're kind of know-it-alls. You know how you can tell a choleric personality? You ask them this question. Hey, give me, share me two or three. Share with me two or three of your weaknesses. They have a hard time coming up with any. I'm serious. They'll go. As soon as they pause, you know they're a choleric. Because phlegmatics start and they got a list of fifteen or twenty. Because they're always insecure. They feel a little insecure about their lives. So, oh my God, I can list hundred of those. Cholerics. I don't know. Let me see if I can come up with one. Because cholerics. Like to be in charge. Clerics think they're always right. And you know what's weird? Most of the time they are. That's kind of disgusting. But it's true. Okay, so if I have that personality, what am I going to do if I'm going to share the business with it? How am I going to share it with it? Am I going to take a long time, talk about compensation for hours? No. I'm going to say, dude, let me tell you one thing about this business. If you think you're tough, this thing will kick your butt. He's going, what are you talking about? You know how successful I am? You know what I've done in my life? I said, I don't care. You ain't done nothing yet. See, you can challenge a choleric like that. They rise up. Their teeth grit. They get a tattoo. Peanut X tattoo, and they go to work. Right? <laughs> Seriously. They're just like, you can get in their face about it. You can challenge them. But you don't do that. The phlegmatic personality, they're the nice people. Okay? Here's the thing with phlegmatics. Phlegmatics, um, they're watchers. Why should I do this? They want to know why. Why should I do this? They don't like to change anything in their life. They like to kind of, they kind of have a job. Most phlegmatics have the same job for 40 years. 
And it's not that they don't, not that they like it, they just don't want to make a change. Change doesn't feel good for them, but they're deeply loyal. But they like to avoid pain and work. Tell me what this is going to take. Now, see a cleric, I go, dude, it's going to kick your butt. If you say that to a phlegmatic, they go, oh, no. They just kind of want to hug you. They want, they're like group hug people. <laughs> Phlegmatics are like this. Boom. Now, see a cleric, I go, dude, it's going to kick your butt. If you say that to a phlegmatic, they go, oh, no. They just kind of want to hug you. They want, they're like group hug people. <laughs> Phlegmatics are like this. Boom. <laughs> we all get together. We hug on each other. Just make them feel good. You hug a cleric and they go, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> It's like, why are, you, why are you hugging me, dude? You can tell me I'm good, just do not hug me, right? We're just going to build a business. It's a business, okay? You go to a phlegmatic, you hug him, and go, yeah, thank you, I needed that, man. I feel better, less pain, right? So if I know this about my people, and I listen to who they are, I can counsel them all differently. And you have to, because you're all one of these four types of personality. The other is the melancholy, the real analytical one. They just want answers, Right? They just want answers. And, you know, for, for, um, for sanguins, they drive them crazy because they want answers and sanguins don't really know what to tell them. And see, people like that, they love, they love lists. If I'm working with a melancholy, here's the, here's, this, this makes a melancholy melt. Get out a piece of paper and a pen. God, they are so excited. Right? And then they go, ballpoint? What kind should I use? Right? They ask you something. I'm sure. I said, dude, I don't give a rip. Use a pencil, for God's sake. Just put something to write with. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm going, I don't even know what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to say, I got 10 points for you. I don't even know what they are yet. I'm like a sanguine cleric. I got to think of the 10 points. And they're just like, like ready to write, right? Because they need information. And then you give them 10 points. They go, thank you so much. God, now I can do this. Now I'm really, I'm really, I, you know, I just, I really feel good about this. Right? These are the different types of people. But we don't know unless we listen. We have to listen to what they're saying. Listen to what their why is. This business is so much of listening. Because if I don't listen to you, if I don't get your why, if I don't find out what you want, how can I know what to give you? That's going to drive your business. Most of you need a gigantic why. One that's really audacious and huge and strong. A reason. Because one of the things I found out is you're building this business, because I built it, I know when you're building it sometimes it looks like a huge struggle. And most of it's about ourselves. We're fighting ourselves most of the time. But it's a big struggle, but when you're looking at your reason you're in, the why of your business, the why of your life, and you're staring at that, then the, the boulders become pebbles in the road. If we're not looking down the road at what it is we want, and the dream, and what it is that's, that's driving us in our lives, if we take our eyes off of that for a second, I promise you the pebbles become boulders. Everything looks so hard, so tough. That's why as leaders, come back to the dream. Bring your people back to why they got in this business. <coughs> the first love, if you will. You know, the first, hey, man, I saw this. I was so excited. Why? I could get in shape physically. I could make a difference in people's lives. This is what I've been looking for all my life. Did that change 90 days because it got hard? No, it's still there. I just got to help them revisit it and learn to be able to do that. It's important. Listen to what's really being said. People give me excuses if I was building my business like you do. I don't have time. You know what I say? Is that the only thing that would ever keep you from building this business? Is that the only thing that would keep you from building it? They said, yeah. I said, well, that's not a problem. I'm going to help you organize your life. You're going to have plenty of time. I'm not the type of person to build this business. Oh, really? You really believe that? Is that the only thing that would keep you from building your business? No problem. I'm going to help you become that kind of person. See, I just take away the excuses. What's another excuse? Don't have time. Don't have, um, not the kind of person. Right? I mean, I don't have the money to get started. Now, let me ask you a question. It's forty dollars to start this business. If I had a turbo Carrera Porsche parked out front, it's a hundred thousand dollar car, and I offered you for forty, would you come up with it right now? Absolutely. So it's not a matter of not having it. It's a matter of you don't see this business as a priority. Let's talk about that. Another way to, to deal for you guys with the with the, the financial thing, you, you you'll get to a point in the business where they'll go, well, how much does it cost to get started? And you'll say forty dollars or whatever. I always deal with that in the beginning. I'd say, you know what? I'm going to share a business with you. And you're going to laugh. You know anything about business? You have your own business or no friends that start a business? Yeah. I said, well, when we get to the part about startup, you're going to laugh because the cost of this business, and now I've helped people make a million dollars a year in this business. I helped somebody go from a, from a, a, a 5000 a week income to a 50000 a week income. And listen to me. It's 